The Richest Man in Babylon. So in this life that we live, there's many things that we could do. We have choices. We can take on new hobbies. We could learn skills. We could travel. We could do a lot of things. And one of the limiting factors that holds us back from being able to do the things we want to do is time and money. Well, the truth is this. If we can dedicate a portion of our lives, portion of our time, and really find the joy and passion in figuring out how to create wealth for ourselves, a few very interesting things happen. Number one is we actually learn how to do it, so we get good at earning money. Number two, we learn the various disciplines, the various skills, the various kinds of behaviors and habits that are learned through the process of acquiring wealth. And those habits and skills become very beneficial for us and transfer over to other areas of our lives. And then as a result of the money that we earn, we find ourselves having more time to reinvest into doing things that bring us joy, bring us happiness, and fulfillment, like helping others, spending time with those that we care about, doing the things that we're passionate about that we don't necessarily earn money on. All this is a net result of learning the skill and process of creating wealth. And it really is a skill and process. And it is one that I believe has been for me one of the most valuable things that I have learned in life. And it is an area that I'm so passionate about that I share a lot of what I've learned on this channel. But I also get great joy in further building upon this skill set. Why? Because the more wealth you create for yourself, the more freedom you have, the more things that you could do, and not just buying material things. I'm talking about being able to choose and pick where you live, who you spend your time with, being able to travel, create a lot of freedom for yourself, and having a certain level of comfort knowing that the future is taken care of because you're able to save, because you know how to invest. And this is probably one of the toughest skills, I believe, that we as human beings can develop, but it is definitely one of the most valuable skills that we can develop, not just monetary value, but fulfillment and gratification as a human. Because the truth is this, look, you have a certain amount of time on this planet, and you could do all kinds of random things. But I'm from the school of, if you do things that bring you joy and that grow you as a person, now that's where you're going to find the deepest fulfillment. And it is from that fulfillment that you realize that you can help others in the process of doing that also. And the rewards just keep growing exponentially. Now, let's talk about The Richest Man in Babylon because I believe it's a, a foundational book. Now, if you read a lot of the reviews on this book, you'll see that there are a lot of people have read this book you know, many years ago, and they credit their success to this book. Why? Because contained with it are just seven principles, seven very seemingly simple principles, but can take you a lifetime to master that will help you create a life that is fulfilling and increase your success when it comes to wealth generation and wealth creation. And the journey is amazing when you work on these seven areas. Let's start off by looking at seven or so quotes, uh, five quotes that I pulled from the book that are worth reflecting upon to really calibrate what we're going to discuss. Ahead of, your stretch, ahead of you stretches your future, like a road leading into the distance. Along the road are ambitions you wish to accomplish, desires you wish to gratify. To bring your ambitions and desires to fulfillment, you must need be successful with money. Hmm. You must be successful with money. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a lot of money. The truth is this. If you know how to create money, then you will probably be very good at a lot of these different sub-skills that come as a result of creating money. One of the things that I recognize is that there's core fundamental skills for being able to create money. And the core skills can go pretty deep. But if you dedicate yourself to developing these core skills, then you get better and better and better at it with time. Now, I talk about this in my entrepreneurship training, but fundamentally, they are as follows. Direct response marketing, copywriting, 
consultative selling, productivity, public speaking, and just having a ability to understand what the marketplace is looking for and then innovate to create products and services that are needed and useful in which you can exchange those products and services for money. Now, overly, I'm simplifying it. I get that. But it's a mind calibrator because a lot of us spend far too much time doing things that are outside of these areas. And as a result, we're not able to create money. We're not successful with money. In other words, we haven't learned the skills to be able to create money at the whim. Now, this might seem very, very almost too good to be true. But the fact is, as stated, that there's only a small percentage of people in this planet that have that ability, that have mastery on that ability to be able to create money on the whim. Most people do not have the ability. And I'm from the belief that most people do not have that ability because far too many people spend time doing things that don't develop those abilities that fall within the categories that I talked about, the categories I just mentioned. And most of the people spend far too much time focusing on things that they do not have control over when it comes to wealth generation, wealth creation. And what we really want to do is we want to figure out what are the things that are within our control. And by the way, the better you get at this, the more you realize that things are within your control. In the starting of this journey, we look at most things being outside of our control. And as we progress and we get better at implementing these principles, not just within this video, but the other videos that I cover on the various books, the more we realize that we actually have control over far more things than we thought we had control over because of our level of awareness increasing by dedicating our time and energy into studying these subjects and then taking action on it, applying it, and continuous optimization. I'm a fan of the concept of Kaizen, okay, Japanese method of improvement, in which every day you dedicate yourself to making incremental improvements in the areas that are important. Okay, So if you learn how to create wealth, for example, you will learn the importance of direct response marketing, consultative selling, copywriting, figuring out how to innovate, understanding all those different elements that are related to that. And incrementally, you will get better at not only understanding, but applying those principles every day. And as a result of that, you start making more money. Now, there's more to it than that. It's not just about making money. We'll talk about that in the seven principles or the seven cures, as he calls it, seven cures of a lean purse. But that's a mind calibrator. If you have not acquired more than a bare existence in the years since we were youths, it is because you either have failed to learn the laws that govern the building of wealth or else you do not observe them. Or else you do not observe them. Most of us, when we look for advice on creating wealth, generating wealth, and building wealth, we don't ask the right people. We don't talk to the right people. We don't associate ourselves with people that have already done it. And a lot of times what you'll find is that people that have already done it aren't necessarily the best teachers okay? because they never did it because they wanted to go out and tell people how to do it. They did it because they wanted to create wealth. So they're not the best modelers and they don't know how to educate the people to the best ability on how to be able to reverse engineer what they did in a way that somebody could take it and apply to produce the same replicated results. But however, this is where you as the student have to become a good teacher to yourself. So one of the things we have to learn is observing people and how they think and how they see reality. So number one, we want to connect with people that already have success, that already have produced results. And number two is we want to know how they got to where they are. We want to be able to understand how to reverse engineer ourselves. So why is this important? Well, as I mentioned, that most people that have created a large amount of wealth aren't actually looking to go out there and teach people how to do it. They just continuously create more wealth. Your job is to be able to go out there and find those people and learn the skill of modeling, learn the skill of learning how to recognize the patterns, how to reverse engineer, how to figure out how they got to where they are 
by relating it back to the books and information that you're studying. And not asking for opinions from others who have not created the results because probably they're going to give you information that is not geared towards objectively creating those results in reality. They might, they might sound good theoretically, but in reality, they do not work. So a great job was done in simplifying the concepts in this book. I'm going to go deeper into it. But understand something. There's a lot to building wealth. There's a lot to creating and being able to grow that wealth. There's a lot to that subject because if it was easy, then everyone would be able to do it. This is a lifelong skill. So number one, one must be committed to doing this. I was very fascinated by the whole subject of creating wealth, building wealth from a very young age. I, you could say, obsessed over it for a large portion of my life, and I still do every day. And the reason why is because I realize it's a high leverage thing to obsess about. And when I say obsessed, I'm not talking about in a, in a negative way. I actually enjoy learning and growing my knowledge on wealth. Because I realized that, wait, wait a second, if I get really good at creating wealth, then I'm able to live a fulfilling life because in this life, in order to do well in this life, in order to enjoy and do the things you need to do, you need to be able to have money or be able to work with some kind of monetary instrument or similar instrument to be able to afford to do the things you want to do, to be able to afford the lifestyle that you want. Now, we don't want to get into a deep discussion on this because the, the, the truth is this that it's really what, about what you want in life, but what we want is choices. And we want to be able to have what we truly want and not say, oh, you know, I don't want that. And meanwhile, deep down inside, you silently resent it because you can't have it. I'm talking about dedicating time, energy, and effort to developing the skills so you have choices. This creates a deep, fulfilling presence to you. Okay, When you know you can have something, but you choose not to have it because you don't want it, is from a different energy than saying, oh, I don't want that thing because you deep down inside don't believe you can get it because you haven't invested the time energy to develop the skills. So developing the skills of creating wealth is not just about creating wealth, but it's about learning the various other disciplines. Good book to read is Mastery by Robert Greene and The Law of uh, Success and 16 Lessons by Napoleon Hill, which I did a video and I'll put a link in the description. But in the process and journey of learning how to create wealth, you learn all these other valuable skills like self-discipline, focus, being able to be more resourceful, connecting the dots. The list goes on and on and on. Hugh takes advice about his savings from one who is inexperienced in such matters, shall pay with his savings for proving the falsely, falsity of their opinions, as mentioned. What we want to do is we want to surround ourselves with people, information, and content that has been created by those that have produced results. And we want to surround ourselves with that information and we want to submerge ourselves in that information and we want to remove from our awareness any kind of information that distorts creating a very powerful map of reality that is going to generate wealth for you. Okay, we have a choice today and we can consume any kinds of information we want. There's a lot of information on this internet that empowers us, that helps you create the end result of wealth. And there's also a lot of information that will distort your view of reality, that will make you feel disempowered and move you away from the progress of having that power over yourself to be able to work with the resources that you have in this very abundant time that we live in to create the results that we want. So we have to be able to choose who we are listening to and really ask ourselves why we are listening to or paying attention to whatever books, information, and so forth, and recognize that you only have 24 hours in a day. So what you consume as far as information goes and what you do with that information is going to determine how fast or how slow or even hinder your progress towards getting the results that you want. Those eager to grasp opportunities for their betterment do attract the interest of the good goddess. She is ever anxious to aid those who please her. Men of action please her best. Action will lead thee forward to the success thou most desire. Thou dost desire. So what this means is that there's luck and there's chance. That exists. But the more actions you take, the luckier you get. Okay? The more actions you take, the more you learn, 
the more you find yourself in opportunities where if you recognize because you're developing the skill that you're smart enough now that you know you're getting lucky, you'll be able to execute those, apply the best practice, business building principles, wealth generation principles to be able to execute and take that opportunity and ride it out into high levels of profitability. And if you do find one of those opportunities, that could be a gold mine right there. But you will not find those opportunities unless you take action. The things that we do not want to do in this realm of personal development or business building, learning, studying, and so forth, is just study for mere entertainment, okay? intellectual entertainment. We don't want to just take this information and say, well, it sounds nice and you know, become very theoretically smart at it and be able to tell others what you're, you're learning. What we want to do is we want to take and we want to apply and want to apply as fast as possible because it's in the application and speed of application that some result, because everything has cause and effect, has been created. And from there comes optimization. And you never know. Sometimes you might take an action. Like you could take an action right away after watching this video. And that could be the thing that could totally change your life and build your wealth to levels beyond your imagination. That is usually the case with those that have created wealth in their life. They get an idea, they implement it, and for some reason, that ends up becoming the big thing. But you'll never experience that whatever the meaning is behind some reason unless you take action. So I recommend taking as much action as possible. And what I like to do is dedicate 20% of my time to learning and 80% of my time towards taking action. If I was to take those two areas of my life and segment it into 80-20 principle, that's how it would look. 20% of my time learning, 80% of my time taking action, applying into my business, and so forth. And that's what we want to do with this information. Opportunity is a haughty goddess who wastes no time with those who are unprepared. Now, there's a saying. If you are prepared, if you are ready, then when the opportunity shows up, you don't need to get ready for it. You're ready to go. Just jump right in. So what we want to do is you want to always be ready because we never know when opportunity shows up. Opportunity can show up at any time. So on that note, what does opportunity look like? Okay, and what are the areas we need to focus on for wealth creation that are opportunity-based, that are the most optimal, and that will increase the likelihood that we're going to get results as far as financial success goes? Well, as far as this book goes, here are the seven areas. Number one, start thy purse to fattening. Arkad addressed a thoughtful man in the second row. My good friend, at what craft workest thou? I, replied the man, am a scribe, and carve records upon the clay tablets. Even at such labor did I myself earn my first coppers. Therefore, thou hast the same opportunity to build a fortune. So what this means is no matter where you are right now, you can start with the resources and opportunities and circumstances that you have right now and work with them to grow yourself to the next level. Do not make the mistake and think that the grass is greener on the other side and if this certain opportunity comes up, then you're going to take action. That's just delusion. You're just lying to yourself. And I've made that mistake many times. And what I found is that it's far better to say, look, here are all the opportunities that I have right now in front of me. Here are the people. Here are the resources. And there's many different kinds of resources. Here's the money. Here are the markets and so forth that I could work with right now. Even if you don't have a business, the job that you have, what do you have right now? And start there. Because even if it's a job that you don't like, you could learn things right now on how to do that job that you don't like better to create more output as a result of the input of your work. And what happens is that that goes recognized. It might not go recognized by others, but you'll recognize that in yourself if others don't recognize it. And soon you'll find yourself in a better job because you'll realize that you no longer are being stimulated and growing from that current position. And with the new skills and elevated view that you have as a result of doing that, you will have a hunch and inspiration to apply for another job and you'll get that other job. Eventually, you'll get to a point where you'll realize that you might as well start your own business. Because look, entrepreneurship, as wild and impossible as it might seem to a lot of people, and me being an entrepreneur now, 
for almost nine years full time, really been one my whole life. There is a process to it. There is a system and there's a way of going about to it that if you're able to follow the process, you will most likely create results. I can't say guaranteed because nothing in life is guaranteed, but that's just how it is. And then those that were able to create a successful business are able to replicate it again because they understand how it works. So that being said, you don't need to worry about all the high, you know, high complexity at the later stages. Start with where you're at right now. Where you're at right now is what you need to help you work and build the skill of resourcefulness. Okay, resourcefulness is going to be a skill that you're going to carry with yourself in all stages of your wealth creation or business building or career levels. It's, you're always going to have that with you and you always have to work with it. And the moment you start forgetting about resourcefulness, that's when you start making mistakes. Okay? And the resourcefulness is, simply put, your ability to work with what you have right now. For every 10 coins thy places within thy purse, take out for use but nine. Thy purse will start to fatten at once, and its increasing weight will feel good in thy hand and bring satisfaction to thy soul. Deride not what I say because of its simplicity, Truth is always simple. I told thee, I would tell how built my fortune. This was my beginning. I too carried a lean purse and cursed it because there was not within to satisfy my desires. But when I began to take out from my purse but nine parts of ten I put in, it began to fatten, so will thine. Okay, so what the first thing we have to do is we have to be able to pay ourselves first. Okay, so what we do, according to this book, and I've increased the numbers over the years, but I started with the same principle when I began this journey back in the days, is you take 10% of what you learn, or what you earn, I should say, and you pay yourself first. You take that and you put it aside. Now, in the beginning, you're probably going to think, well, I can't put 10% aside because... I've got all these expenses and so forth, but you must develop the discipline to do this because that 10% that you're going to pull aside is going to be reinvested into business building or wealth creation growth. And you can't invest if you don't have anything to invest with. So you have to be able to start where you are right now and develop the discipline to take just a small 10% and put it aside before you start paying your expenses. And this also has a very good psychological benefit from it because it goes into our next point is you'll learn how to control your expenses so that you're not reducing the quality of your life, but instead you are being more resourceful. You're learning how to develop the skill of resourcefulness and you'll feel great joy and satisfaction knowing that you are on the pathway towards creating a life where you're building wealth for yourself. And it just starts with that mere 10% in the beginning. Now I will tell a strange truth, the reason for which I know not. When I cease to pay out more than nine-tenths of my earnings, I manage to get along just as well. I was not shorter than before. Also, ere long, did coins come to me more easily than before. Surely it is a law of the gods that unknown him who keepeth and spendeth not a certain part of all his earnings shall gold come more easily. Okay, so we start out by taking 10% and putting it aside, making a commitment that if you're not doing that, from this day forth, you're going to take 10% of every paycheck and put it aside, which is going to be used for building wealth. Next, control thy expenses. Some of you members, my students, have asked me this. How can a man keep one-tenth of all he earns in his purse when all the coins he earns are not enough for his necessary expenses? Confuse not the necessary expense with thy desires. Each of you, together with your good families, have more desires than your earnings can gratify. Therefore, are thy earnings spent to gratify these desires insofar as they will go? So one of the things we have to understand is if we're living paycheck to paycheck, there's probably some areas that we could learn how to develop the valuable skill of, I would call it sacrifice, okay? understanding that, look, if it's wealth creation that you want to uh, aspire to have and build, then we have to start where we are right now and 
there's going to be other things that we're going to do to increase our wealth, like learn valuable skills and so forth. But the very first discipline is to put that 10% aside. And we have to be committed to doing it, even if it involves sacrifice, even if it means that we've got to downgrade some of our quality of life. Why? Because everybody who creates wealth goes on this journey. They start out, you know, there's a lot of people that say, well, you don't have to reduce your expenses, just make more. Well, I believe in that too. Learn how to make more. But I also believe in the skill of resourcefulness. And that if a person just focuses on making more and hasn't developed the ability to be more resourceful and understand the value of sacrifice, then they're always going to end up spending just as much as they make, and if not more. And there are many people out there in this world today that make a lot of money, but are still in massive amounts of debt because they haven't learned how to control their expenses. And I created a whole video on this a few videos ago on my finance spreadsheet which was very useful for me because back in the days I was in $50,000 debt. And by putting together a very basic spreadsheet and evolving over the years, it not only got me out of the debt, but allowed me to buy my first house and so forth, but it taught me where I could reduce my expenses. And no matter how much money I've earned over the years as income started to go up, I still practice the discipline of reducing expenses because it continues to hold on and further build my skill of resourcefulness. I say to you that just as weeds grow in a field wherever the farmer leaves space for their roots, even so freely do desires grow in men whenever there is a possibility for their being gratified. So that's one of the reasons why we got to do it, to emphasize my point. When you learn how to sacrifice, when you learn how to value what you have, you don't leave room for all these desires that are not going to benefit you to go into your mind. Your mind is very valuable and you have to protect it. I did a whole video on the power of the subconscious mind, but a large part of what we are today, if not all of it, is the programming that is in our subconscious mind. And the programming goes into our subconscious mind when there is space for it, usually as we navigate our environments, the different kinds of people that were exposed to the information and so forth. That's true. But what happens is when we become resourceful, we focus and value what we are doing right now, the things that are important to us, and what we focus on expands to fill our awareness. And it doesn't allow for room for any kind of distorted or thoughts that will mess you up. Another good video to watch is Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. It's a very good book because what we don't want is to drift and to go into all these areas where marketing and advertising and the world is saying we should have this desire. And the desire is not going to help you. Okay, there's many of these desires. I don't want to get into the whole list of different kinds of desires, but there's tons of desires that people give into everything from greed to lust and gluttony and so forth that aren't helping them, that are actually destroying them, that the reason why they're giving into those desires is because there's room in their mind for those desires to come and set in and essentially control them. And guess what? A lot of those desires require money. So people will go out and spend money and live paycheck to paycheck and even spend even more to fulfill those desires and thus they won't be able to create wealth for themselves. So this is very powerful here because the joy of learning how to create wealth and apply these principles brings great control and belief and confidence in yourself because you learn how to work with not only what you have, the resourcefulness, but how to prevent yourself from going down the path of temptation towards areas that will lead you in a pathway that you don't want to go that's not beneficial for you in the long term. This then is the second cure for a lean purse. Budget thy expenses that thou mayst have coins to pay for thy necessities, to pay for thy enjoyments, and to gratify thy worthwhile desires without spending more than nine-tenths of the earning. So I always like to take this a step further because that's just like how I like to do it. So I save more than 10%, but it's important that you at least make that the bare, bare, bare minimum because that's really all you need to grow. And there's other areas where you can increase your wealth and so forth. So depending on how much you make, 10% might not be that significant now, but as you build your ability and hone in on your craft and maybe move into other opportunities and so forth, you'll have a greater chance of bringing in more income. Thus, that 10% will be even higher. But you have to at least commit to that 10%. Now, another point that was brought up here is that 
to pay for thy enjoyments and gratify thy worthwhile desires. Okay, this doesn't mean that you can't learn how to be resourceful and still have fun and still have enjoyment. Okay, this is not about sacrificing to the point where you're burnt out and stressed out and you hate life. That's not what we're talking about. Resourcefulness to me means learning how to work with it so you still save that 10%, but with what you invest in as far as enjoyment and gratification to worthwhile desires brings you so much happiness because you learn how to find happiness in those elements. For example, people that are spoiled and don't do these kind of things can go to a fancy restaurant and then just you know have all this food and they won't really value the taste and real effort that was put in by the chef. And even though they pay a premium for this food, uh, food because a lot of quality has been put in because of the skill and the art of the chef, they don't really value it, so they're just kind of shoveling it down. But let's say you do have the ability to value what you're eating. Then for which every bite you take, you value it even more. You appreciate the palate that you have and the different kinds of tastes and so forth. And you don't really even need to go to the high-end restaurants to experience that. You could do that with a moderate restaurant and so forth. So that's what I'm talking about. Learn how to value what you have right now as if it was the best thing ever. And when you do that, you develop resourcefulness. And when you learn how to do that, as your income goes up, as your wealth grows, you will value those luxuries that you'll get even more and you won't be spoiled by them. Multiply. Number three, make thy gold multiply. Behold, thy lean purse is fattening. Thou hast disciplined thyself to leave therein one-tenth of all thou earned. Thou hast controlled any expense, expenditures to protect thy growing treasure. Next, we will consider means to put thy treasure to labor and to increase. Gold in a purse is gratifying to own and satisfieth to uh, satisfy a miserly soul, but earns nothing. The gold we may retain from our earnings is but the start. The earnings it will make shall build our fortunes. So what we want to do now is with the money that we've put aside, we want to reinvest that back into growth. And I don't want this to be a lengthy discussion into investments, nor am I going to give any formal investment advice because that wouldn't be legal to do so. But this is where we got to start looking at investments. There are many different kinds of investments. One of my favorite investments is reinvesting back into existing businesses that I'm involved with. That's what I like to do. There's real estate investments. There is investments in the markets, investment in all kinds of different things available. Lots of investment vehicles doing that are available today. But when you reinvest back into those areas, there are certain criteria that he talks about that he recommends. For example, he talks about investing in areas where the principal is protected. So if there's an issue, you can pull out and get your principal back. I tell you, my students, a man's wealth is not in the coins he carries in his purse. It is in the income he buildeth, the golden stream that continually froweth into his purse and keepeth always bulging. That is what every man desireth. That is what thou, each one of thee, desireth, an income that continueth to come whenever thou work or travel. So this opportunity to be able to create this exists today more so than any time in history. There are a lot of ways to create passive income, and I'm a huge fan of multiple streams of passive income. That's a big thing that I talk about a lot and in my entrepreneurship course as well because the idea of being able to invest into something that is an area that you're skilled in. Obviously, you can't just invest in random things. And again, I'm not going to give formal investment advice for obvious reasons, but the truth is this. There are a lot more opportunities today than ever before where you can invest into something that is an asset that is a lot of times even digital-based, okay? not necessarily physical. Okay, Back in the days, it was physical stuff that you would invest in, like real estate, but now there's digital stuff that you can invest in. And th those digital investments can bring you multiple streams of passive income. It's worth studying, reflecting upon, and using that as a place of learning also because core business skills and investment skills are universal skills that if you learn how investing works in general, and I might do some book discussions on investment books coming up just to talk about just the generic principles of investing and so forth. But once you develop the understanding and awareness and skill of investing, then 
you're going to learn how to invest in a broad array of investment vehicles. Okay, so we want to take the money that we're saving, the 10%, and invest it so that it grows. Now, on that finance spreadsheet that I, the video that I did, I included a section where it talks about the net worth calculator. And there's probably a lot of these available where you can calculate how much you want to be worth at whatever time and how much principal you have and how much you need to grow as far as percentage every year with contributions to be able to hit your financial goals. It's worth playing around with stuff like that. So in the beginning, I never used to like doing stuff like that. But then I learned to like these things because here's the interesting thing. When you have a burning desire to create wealth, we have a burning desire to, and we, I believe we all should create that burning desire because that's what's required to thrive in today's world, to be able to create the opportunities for ourselves to make money and then also have that money grow. We not only have to be able to find those opportunities, but we have to be able to work with those opportunities and understand the skills and even you know partner with people who have those skills and so forth. But the bottom line is we have to do it. It needs to get done. If we don't do it in today's world, we're going to have a really hard time. We won't be able to create money for ourselves and we'll struggle. We won't have the options and choices that we'd like to have. So it's worth learning and getting passionate about those kind of things because it's actually quite an interesting world. In the beginning when I started doing, uh, getting into, I was always an entrepreneur my whole life. And, but there were certain things that I didn't like, like math and certain kinds of spreadsheets and all these different things. I didn't like doing it. But then when I realized that by actually getting good and having a certain level of understanding of crunching numbers and figuring out these ratios and so forth, that I would increase my wealth. I started to get excited by it. And then I started learning more and more about how all these calculators and things work. So I recommend doing that. Great income I have acquired. So great that I call, I'm call i called a very rich man. My loans to agar were my first training in profitable investment. Gaining wisdom from this experience, I extended my loans and investment as my capital increased. From a few sources at first to many sources later, flowed into my purse a golden stream of wealth available for such wise uses as I should decide. Okay, so let's just stop for a moment and reflect upon this. We start out by putting 10% aside. We then look at how we can control our expenses so we can live within our means and maybe even increase that. Then we start getting into learning how to invest. And by the way, I look at businesses and investment also. Okay, investing in a part-time business or investing in franchises and so forth. And, you know, if you're going to do all these things, if you're going to invest in businesses, you got to learn the core business skills. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time really understanding how all this stuff works, and you're going to leave it up to luck and chance. We don't want to do that. So we want to then get passionate about learning entrepreneurship and business building skills, all the different dynamics. And I talked about a handful of them in this video, but a lot of my videos, I talk about the business building skills. Then you learn how to invest that capital into businesses or real estate or other kinds of assets and so forth. And now your wealth is starting to grow. Another thing we need to keep into consideration after that, number four, is guard thy treasures from loss. Okay, so what happens is your wealth goes up. There's a saying, it's easier to make the money, it's harder to keep it. Okay, because now that you're making money, there's going to be all kinds of sources that are going to be or people or whatever, trying to get their hands on your money, and so forth. And we want to be able to protect it. And people are mark, you know, good marketers and so forth, people coming up with all kinds of investment opportunities and so forth that might not actually produce the returns that they're saying to take your money away. So this is one of the traps that we fall under. And I know personally I've fallen under some of these traps myself because I've invested in certain things that I didn't have much experience in and I lost money. But this is part of the journey. So this happens when you get to a certain point. And arguably this might always happen uh, because you know you don't always know where your money is going to produce the most returns and where there's going to be a loss and so forth. And there's diversification and hedging and all that stuff, which I'm not going to get into, which is all part of learning how to invest that can protect you in these areas. But we want to be aware of this point. Misfortune loves a shining mark. Gold in a man's purse must be guarded with firmness, else it be lost. Thus it be wise, and we must first secure small amounts and learn to protect them before God entrusts us with larger Okay, so, you know, common things that happen with those, and I've seen this with some of my friends, is once they start making good money, you know, the, all kinds of people come into their lives and they start doing all these, picking up all these habits they never had before, some even getting into to drugs and stuff like that. And next thing you know, they're, they're losing their money left, right, and center. They're not as sharp. They're not as clear in their thinking. And they're on the path towards losing it all. Okay, so 
when you start making money and you start building wealth, it's not a time to relax. It's a time to be even more astute. It's time to double down on your ability to be sharper and recognize that you're now kind of in a little way on a pedestal. You're kind of in the spotlight a little bit. So you've got to not be paranoid, but understand that now you've got to get into a space of guarding thy wealth, okay? guarding the treasures that you've created and further grow it. Every owner of gold is tempted by opportunities whereby it would seem that he could make larger sums by its investment in most plausible projects. Often friends and relatives are eagerly uh, entering such investments and urge him to follow. Okay, so this is groupthink. And what happens is the same principles that gets us to a point where we create success, a lot of times people start to abandon them and relax when they created the success, including groupthink, understanding what groupthink is. So if people are doing, if a bunch of people are doing something, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. You have to exercise critical thinking. You got to understand your own risk tolerance. You've got to understand your advantages and disadvantages. Where are the alternatives that you can reinvest in, in areas that you understand that can produce growth instead of speculating into areas where you're just guessing. And a lot of times when we see others doing some kind of investment, we have no clue how it works. We jump into it and it's a form of gambling. That's really what it is. It's not investing. The first sound invest uh, principle, the first sound principle of investment is, sec is security for thy principle. It is wise to be intrigued by larger earnings when thy principle may be lost. I say not. The penalty of risk is probable loss. Study carefully before parting with thy treasure, each assurance that it may be safely reclaimed. Be not misled by thine own romantic desires to make wealth rapidly. So this is where greed starts to come in. When you start to make money and you start multiplying your wealth and so forth, it's easy to get greedy and say, well, now I'm going to go for the big shots. And what happens is when you start to think like that, you lose some of the critical thinking abilities or you're not exercising the critical thinking abilities that got you to where you are in the first place. So it's always good to practice level-headedness. And that's why in this journey of building wealth and doing it properly, and we're really talking about here the foundations of doing it properly, this is a discipline, a skill, it's a way of life, and it's something that you practice in all areas of your wealth creation, starting level, medium level, high level, and ongoing. And it's those that have maintained the level headedness required and don't get pulled in to shiny objects and so forth that continue to build wealth. Most people that I know that continuously, or all, everyone I know who continuously builds their wealth, who started out very, very humbly and continuously build their wealth, are exercising the same principles and disciplines they learned from the beginning and level headedness and make educated decisions and estimations and crunch numbers and look at alternatives before they go and invest in something. And they never invest in something they have no clue about unless they are dealing with somebody that is very trustworthy, that they have a very good relationship with, that they can trust. And that's not always absolute too, because sometimes even people that are very good, trustworthy people might not make the sound judgments. But the, the point what I'm trying to make here is this, not overthinking this, and getting paranoid, but rather we have to learn how to make educated decisions and we have to not let the shiny object and all what everyone else is doing in group things steer us away from our goals. And we have to recalibrate and ask ourselves, are we making an educated decision here? Or are we doing just doing this because we want the quick getting rich? And by the way, the most get rich quick schemes do not work. If you ever come across any get rich quick and stuff like that, for me, those kind of things have never worked, and I have not met anyone that has made them work. The only kind of wealth that I've ever seen created in life were those that were built on these foundations and principles that we're talking about. Okay, discipline, hard work, focus, creating something that's valuable into the marketplace, learning how to market, really learning how to sell, developing abilities, building teams, implementing principles like that were covered in the E-Myth Revisited. I did a video on that. I'll put a link in the description and so forth, and wise investment strategies. And I hang around some friends who are investment bankers, and they give me, and they have a credibility and deep understanding and real pragmatic experience of how things work in investing and so forth, and real level-headedness. And they don't get into these kind of speculatory things 
that others might find themselves in, and they give very sound advice. So that's why, again, it's going back to the beginning, is we want to surround ourselves and really have a council of people that have results in the specific areas that we're not only earning money in, but investing in, and we have to do our education. This is a lifelong journey. So now I've covered a lot of points so far. As you can see, this takes a lot of work, but you got to be passionate about it, and the rewards are great, and why a lot of people don't have the ability to create these kind of results is because they're not willing to do the work to educate themselves, to invest the time necessary, because it is a large investment of time. Granted, it is, because if it was easy, everyone uh, does it. There's no shortcuts. If you do earn money and you find something that works that's a shortcut, a lot of times you'll see this. There's tons of stories out there. People will lose that money because they don't know how to protect it. They don't know how to reinvest it. They haven't learned these other skills on how to protect themselves from people that try to get access to that money. All kinds of things happen, and that's why building it proper from the ground up is the right way to do it. This is a long-term strategy, okay, long-term strategy. Your earning potential will increase if you do this properly. Yes, you'll make more money, but you'll also learn how to deal with investments in the long term, and it's going to be built on the foundation of all these elements that we've talked about, not only in this video, but in the other videos. Number five, make die dwelling a profitable investment. So this is fundamentally true, but it varies. And again, not to get too complex, the idea is this. If a man setteth aside nine parts of his earnings upon which to live and enjoy life, and if any part of this nine parts he can turn into a profitable investment without determinant to his well-being, then so much faster will his treasure glow, grow. So he's talking about buying a property and living in it and using that property as an uh, uh, opportunity to gain more net worth or wealth and so forth because the, the value goes up. And this is something that is not as clean cut as it may sound. Okay, Because sometimes, and if you own a business, for example, owning a house might not be the best investment. You might be better off reinvesting it into other vehicles that produce greater return on investment and having a property that you rent in which it's a lower cost, but at the same time, there's certain perks you get as a business owner. You get to write off percentage and so forth. You really have to work with an accountant on this one and de determine what's best for you. But the key point is this, that if it does make sense, and I always believe in crunching your own numbers. Don't listen to what a real estate agent tells you or a mortgage broker or whatever. You've got to crunch your own numbers. This is very important. Okay, there's tons of calculators and spreadsheets, and it's worth sitting down and looking at if you're looking at buying a house as an investment to make that a profitable investment that you're going to live in, and if you're looking at it as an investment and you're looking at what your expenses are every month, that you want to look at all these numbers. I'm not going to talk about them, but they are all these different things to see if that really is an educated decision based on taxes, property, the cost of acquiring it, the additional whatever interest fees and so forth versus where else can that capital be redeployed for a better investment. Now, there's no right or wrong way of doing this, but I believe that when one crunches their numbers, like I've done in many scenarios, I used to own a house back in the days. I do not own a house right now. I sold that house. But I won't buy a house right now because there's better investments that I'm working with right now than owning a house based on my current lifestyle and the things that I'm doing nowadays. But that, not might, be, that might not be true for everyone else. And maybe in a certain point in my life, that situation might change. Or I might find a market that exists where it makes sense to then go in and buy a property and so forth. But we really have to crunch our own numbers to figure that out. Number six, ensure a future income. The life of every man predicted from his childhood to his old, old proceed, proceedeth from his childhood to his old age. This is a path of life, and no man may deviate from it unless the gods call him prematurely to the world beyond. Therefore, do I say that it behooves a man to make preparation for a su substitute income in the days to come, when he is no longer young, and to make preparations for his family, should he be no longer with them to comfort and support them? This lesson shall instruct thee in providing a full purse when time has made thee less able to earn. So investments generating creating assets or buying assets, investing in assets that produce multiple streams of passive income 
can be physical assets, digital assets, conceptual, not conceptual, intellectual property, all kinds of stuff. A book to read that goes a little deeper into this is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I did a video on that. I'll put a link in the description. But what we want to do is we want to think about our future. We want to think about when we're no longer able to work, if certain circumstances come up. We want to think long-term as well as short-term, as well as medium-term. But what they're talking about here is the longer term. And you want to look at how much, and that's why my spreadsheet was really good. I, watch, I recommend you watch that video and learn how to plan for the future and how much you realistically are going to need as far as net worth and wealth to be able to live the kind of lifestyle you want in your future and start right away. Because what happens with a lot of people is it just gets to a point where it's just too late. And, you know, we can argue and say it's never too late, but at the same time, it is better to start as early as possible to plan for these things and figure out what it is that we need to be able to live the lifestyle that we want to live. Number seven, increase thy ability to earn. I speak to thee, my students, of one of the most vital remedies for a lean purse. Yet I will talk not of gold, but of yourselves, of the men beneath the robes of many colors who do sit before me. I will talk to you of those things within the minds and lives of men which do work for or against their success. So this is about investing in yourself, investing in your ability to earn. If you improve your ability to earn, then all kinds of doors open up. It's not necessarily how much money you have in your bank account or what your net worth is right now. But there are other factors like the assets that you have access to, the people within your network and so forth that you can leverage, that you can work with should you need to pull a large amount of capital to either reinvest or require to sustain yourself. So this is the interesting thing about the entrepreneur's journey. And this is why I'm a big fan of being an entrepreneur is because you learn how to work with all kinds of different resources that most people don't even know exist and because you become better at working with those resources, you start to detach from the idea that having a big bank account or having a big net worth is the holy grail. You see, let's say you, weren't, you didn't have any money in your bank account, but you had a whole bunch of friends that were multimillionaires and they had a lot of disposable income. And you didn't have any money in your bank account. And one day you decided that, look, I'm going to start taking care of this area of my life. And you were working on your entrepreneurial skills. You started developing the ability to create value and understand the different aspects of entrepreneurship, marketing, selling, all that different kinds of stuff. Well, when you start your business, now you have access to these group of friends who are very wealthy that most likely have access to other wealthy people. And as a result of it, you're able to create a product or service that they would be more than willing to pay you for and give you access to their network of friends and associates and whoever so you could sell that product or service and you can find yourself being very wealthy pretty quick. Okay, so it's not just the money you have as far as net worth. That's just a number that, you know, most of society likes to think uh, about because it's, it, it's very limited thinking. I'm not putting people down, but it, it really is limited thinking when you think about net worth because it's who you know, it's what you have access to, it's your ability to communicate. You know, one of the most valuable skills that you can have, period, is communication skills. And not just talking really well. I'm not, I'm not saying to sound nice. I'm talking your ability to sell, your ability to persuade, your ability to market, your ability to know who to talk to, when to talk to, why to talk to them, how to talk to them, who not to talk to, and so forth, which is a skill that you learn in the journey of entrepreneurship. You learn it a lot through sales, and that's why I always say the best entrepreneurs usually are salespeople. They come from a sales background. Okay? Wolf of Wall Street, the book discussion I did on that, The Way of the Wolf, I recommend you read that book and watch that video because the reason for his success, and you know, he ended up in jail, and he even said this, look, if I had done things the legit way, he would have been way more successful. He didn't have to go that route. He just went that route because he made some poor decisions. Now he does pretty well for himself, but there's countless stories like that. They come from a sales background. Okay? A lot of successful entrepreneurs come from a sales background. If they do not come from a sales background, they have to learn how to sell and market 
because you can have the best product or service out there. It could be the coolest thing. But if you don't know how to persuade the market to buy that, to give you money for that, it can be very hard. So that's why I put a lot of emphasis on that in this channel. Because for me, it's been one of my greatest skills that I've acquired is my ability to write an email, to pick up the phone and call somebody and get money right away if I needed it. Okay, If I needed it. I'm not just doing it just to take money because you have to reinvest that money into creating success for your clients and so forth or reinvest back to give that return back to the person that lend you the money and so forth. But that's what I'm talking about. All these skills, and there's tons of them, are going to increase your ability to learn. Preceding accomplishments must be desire. Okay? To develop these abilities, you have to have that burning desire. So let's talk about that for a moment. Thy desires must be strong and definite. General desires are but weak longings. For a man to wish to be rich is of little purpose. For a man to desire five pieces of gold is a tangible desire which he can press to fulfillment. After he has backed his desire for five pieces of gold with strength of purpose to secure it, next he can find similar ways to attain ten pieces and then twenty pieces and later thousand pieces and behold, he has become wealthy. As a man perfecteth himself in his calling, even so doth his ability to earn increase. Okay, so these are the main points here. Work on these main points. And if you were to go to Amazon and you were to look at this book and you would read the reviews, I, I did that earlier today, you would see a whole bunch of reviews of people that read this book many years ago and have credited it to their success, their wealth success, financial success. Okay, it's a very powerful book, very simple and short read. And I've shared with you my own insights and perspectives on it, and I hope you found that to be really valuable. But these are the areas that we want to focus on, and we want to dedicate our time to not only build wealth, be able to earn more, but have that wealth grow over time, but more importantly, dedicate ourselves towards a worthy ideal, as Earl Nightingale mentions in The Stranger Secret. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want a copy of the mind map, the link is in the description. I will talk to you soon. Take care.